hard it is being a woman looking the way I do. <laughs> I typically do not to uh, well, throw movies on like this early in the morning, but I thought it'd be nice since, you know, I can eat my pizza really quick and get dressed and head right down to the bus, but I wanted to share a story. So when I was about six to eight, or ages six to eight, I loved the Roger Rabbit series, even though... Uh, he kind of scared me, uh, or especially it was my dad when he would do Roger Rabbit's please. It really scared me because uh, he was uh, that good. But I also liked Roger Rabbit, and I liked um, everything about the movie because it was just uh, phenomenal. But when I first went to it was uh, 30 years ago with my mother and then uh, a 10-year-old that she was taking care of. and one of her close friends and we sat down and watched it together and uh, I liked it even though uh, it scared me just like it scared anybody else and I mean I can remember I mean I look on YouTube there are all kinds of uh, people on there that share the same stories that they were afraid of Judge Doom once his eyes popped out and you uh, realize that he's a tune but anyway I wanted to share a story so uh, in regards to that 10 year old, uh, she had a 16 year old sister and both of them loved the Roger Rabbit movies and they were so excited they bought coloring books with Roger Rabbit and they collected uh, cups from McDonald's and I remember uh, wanting to use those coloring books but no they were really stingy about it even though they had other coloring books but I just couldn't touch the Roger Rabbit coloring books and you know, the older one, the, the 16 year old, was coloring one day and I picked up uh, a crayon and wanted to help her and she said, no, that's mine. And she said that I needed to consider getting my own Roger Rabbit coloring book. And then the 10 year old had another uh, Roger Rabbit coloring book just sitting around. And so I found this great uh, black and white drawing of Roger using um, an exercise bike and he was sweating. And of course, but in those days, I thought that any water was a tear and I thought why is he crying and my mother said no no he's sweating so it, even though I knew it was wrong I colored in that book anyway because I knew that <laughs> because I knew it was, it was my favorite picture and yes um, that 10 year old was mad at me for that but I mean she was subtle and she was the had the pat was very passive aggressive and very hurt and disappointed I mean, and I felt guilty about it afterwards, but I'm glad that I colored in that book because uh, it shows that, uh, you know, those girls thought the world revolved around them and they thought they thought they could be greedy. And then, and, and then you know, uh, the 10-year-old had a, the McDonald's cup and I wanted to know if I could drink out of it, but no, she was using it as a collectible. And when I talked about it even more, stop talking about my Roger Rabbit cup. So... Anyway, that story has a happy ending. So about a year and a half later, or not a year, I mean more than that, like six, seven, eight months later down the road, uh, when I was in uh, a special class for uh, individuals with the head ADHD and other behavior problems, uh, because I just couldn't handle the mainstream in first grade at that time. Um, we were playing a game. We were playing a game, and I was allowed to. Uh, I, mean, I played bingo when I picked up a cup, and I thought that the cup was uh, baseball, and you know, and I put it on my desk or somewhere, and then somebody pointed out, "Hey, that's a Roger Rabbit cup," and I looked, and it was the same one that the ten-year-old had in her collection at her bedroom, and so I was uh, so happy when I got that cup. So, anyway, I'm going to get back to. Uh, watching this now and eating breakfast. So I'm on the train now, but the walk from um, my condo to the bus stop was incredibly quiet this morning. There were hardly any cars out on the road. I mean, I only saw one vehicle leaving my complex this morning. Otherwise, I was... Uh, right out on the road, so, but 
now I'm waiting at the train station so I can uh, go into uh, the Peachtree Center and then walk down Baker Street to the Georgia Aquarium for this event today, which is, again, put on by Autism Speaks. So, anyway, um, I have some good news. As you guys know, I recently just was able to qualify for a um, reduced fare program with MARTA because, um, quote, autism is a disability, which I think is a nice privilege. So you get to save a little bit of money. Um, I mean, I could have done the, I mean, I tried to, to do the university pass, but because I'm a staff, they wanted to charge me uh, $75 a month, but that was kind of a catch-22 process as well. I mean, anything that you pay on the 1st and the 15th doesn't uh, automatically activate the card. I mean, everything that you pay for is like an advanced deal where it just rolls over. But if you went to the, um, the station and tapped your Breeze card, uh, which was the university pass, they, they charge you $88, which you save no money at all. But if I were at the student rate, it would have been about $61. But again, that would have, um, that payment would have rolled over to the next month uh, for, for the monthly pass, which I think is really strange for Georgia State University to do. I don't quite understand that. But, I mean, I have a university pass, which I haven't used because my budget's just been so tight. And, and I mean, I was hoping to use it when I started working at the real estate firm. And since that's not working out now, um, I just decided to go with the... Um, the reduced fare and that really worked out so I had a chance to uh, load that card for the first time last night online I put a month's worth of trips on there which I'm really happy about and I mean I used it for the first time this morning and that's nifty so I'm about to exit out of the fair gate today and to head straight up to Baker Street and walk down to the Georgia Aquarium, which was the same place that uh, you saw me on Friday. up. I had no idea that the Georgia Aquarium had lights on it. Pretty. But maybe the lights for the Georgia Aquarium uh, represent the private event or the uh, the blue event. But uh, it looks like uh, Pemberton Place is closed, which is the park where uh, the World of Coke and the aquarium are. But uh, at any rate, I'm trying to walk in and trying to figure out where the entrance is, because this is a private event. Uh, I think it's somewhere up here. Let's see. How do we get... officially in uh, the Georgia Aquarium now and uh, without further delay I'd like to uh, get some uh, shots of some of the different exhibits. I got a schedule that I'm going to uh, probably use and then uh, I'm gonna look for a uh, sensory friendly room because uh, they're supposed to have one of them on site so Something 
interesting about being at this event. Um, evidently, there are parents out there that have individuals with autism that scream really loud, and me, I'm a really loud screamer too, and I wasn't about to correct their little girl because I understand. Um, but I covered my ears and they found that offensive and I told them they had sensory issues. They were just kind of callous and into their, world, their own little world. But the best thing to do is find families that understand and tell them, um, you know, I understand what your daughter's going through. I'm autistic too. On a regular basis, um, if I bought a, a ticket to this aquarium, number one, it's incredibly expensive, but this time I got in free. I mean, I came here for my birthday, which got me in free as well. But on a, a typical, normal, and ready, and a regular day, I've learned that um, this aquarium can be overwhelming very, very quickly. I usually like the, um, and don't tell anybody, I like the one in uh, Chattanooga better, YouTube. But since today it's nice and quiet, I have a chance to um, actually um, have a couple hours to enjoy the exhibits. But anyway, I'm on my way to check out the sensory friendly room. And I'm also doing uh, some footage, as you're seeing, of the aquarium itself. What a wonderful world. supposed to be the, the quiet area but I noticed that they didn't really have any um, fidgets or weighted blankets or weighted vests like they did the time that I um, volunteered at Zoo Atlanta for their Autism Speaks event back before I got hired at the Center for Leadership and Disability but in front of me is a screen where you can um, pull it up and see the beluga whales going swimming <laughs> So, um, I had a wonderful time doing all those videos, but um, I'm going to sign off now, but if you like... If you like what I'm doing, please be sure to uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Also be sure to check me out on Twitter and uh, Facebook, Instagram. You can find me on WordPress at Hello World, 240 at WordPress.com. That's Hello World, 240 at WordPress.com. So, um, until next time, I'm Maya Sendermeyer, and I'm signing out now. Bye. really expensive but I'm gonna go down one more time and uh, see about getting myself something to eat because it's kind of a special day nope I just I'm not going to eat here I think I'm going to uh, head to the CNN Center after all because they have subway and Arby's and those are two of my favorite foods